I am not in the commercial space industry, at least not anymore. I'm a scientist. Um, I like to call myself a professional Martian because I work on rocks and robots on the red planet. I think when a lot of you think about Mars, people tend to think of stuff like this. And this is maybe the whole driver behind the Mars exploration program, both for NASA and maybe for the general public as well. But I want your take home point from this talk to be that Mars is really interesting outside of the search for Martians. We've had a lot of different ideas over the last few centuries of what aliens on Mars might look like. Different fantastical renderings, um, a lot of them coming out of um, old science fiction, things like H.G. Wells, but a lot of it spurring particularly from this particular map by an, an Italian astronomer named Giovanni Schiaparelli. And he drew this map of Mars over the course of about a decade in the uh, about 1880s, looking through his poor quality telescope in today's standards and drawing all these dark and light features that he saw. Now, an American astronomer, Percival Lowell, accidentally misinterpreted Schiaparelli's uh, Italian terminology, canali, which means channels, to mean canals. And from that, Lowell got this fanciful idea that Mars was completely inhabited by these ingenious aliens who had figured out how to take water from the polar caps, which are very easily visible even through a cheap backyard telescope. You can go get one at Costco and see them for yourself. And constructing these canals to bring the water to the more desert regions near the equator to grow this lush vegetation and support this large society. Now, his views at the time were not necessarily accepted by the greater scientific community, but it did hold a lot of clout with popular culture and the general public. And so we were really hoping that maybe we would find some aliens on Mars. And we sent a series of missions there to look for it. The first one was Mariner 4 in 1964, which did a flyby, and we didn't see any aliens. We actually didn't see anything very interesting at all. We got pictures like this one on the slide here, which is just a very grainy image of craters. It looks very similar to the moon. So we flew by again with Mariner 6, and we still didn't see anything very exciting. It still just looked like this plain cratered landscape without anything happening. And we went back again with Mariner 7 and still found nothing. So this fantastical view that we had of Mars with lush vegetation and canals and giant green aliens had been completely shattered over the course of the 1960s and into the early 1970s until we got to Mars with Mariner 9. And Mariner 9 completely changed our view of the red planet. Just by happenstance of the way that Mariner 4, 6, and 7 flew past Mars, we didn't catch any of the places where you had interesting features like stuff carved by water. And Mariner 9 went into orbit and caught all of these things. We found uh, the inset in the upper left up there, I guess the upper right left for you guys. Uh, we found channels that we knew were carved by liquid water because of the shape, and particularly the shape tells us that they were carved by rain. They're what we call dendritic channels. So you have water that collects on a hillside and then flows downhill. You'll see a lot of these channels if you live anywhere where there are mountains. So this tells us that there was water on Mars for a sustained period of time. We also found things like this larger channel near Galvalis, which is hundreds of kilometers long. But instead of being carved by water flowing across the surface, this was actually formed, we think, based on the shape by water flowing in the subsurface and basically undermining the soil so that it collapsed over the course of these hundreds of kilometers. We have hundreds more images of the planet that have lots more features just like these. Then in the late 1970s, we sent a pair of Viking missions, Viking 1 and 2, which consisted of two orbiters and two landers, and we sent them to look for signs of life on Mars. And they found some really interesting things. We caught some stuff like early morning frost uh, around the landing sites. But we did some chemical experiments of the soil to see if we could track down evidence of life, or at least the pieces of life, pieces of organic material. And other than some controversial results that have pretty much been discounted at this point, we didn't find any evidence for life. We didn't even find any evidence for organic material at all. So our hopes had been built up by Mariner 9, only to be shattered again by Viking to say, well, it looks like there's actually no Martians anyway. Even though we had things like this, um, I show this slide now in a lot of outreach talks when I'm talking to students, and I realize that many of them are too young to know what the face on Mars was, which is a little bit sad. So hopefully many of you have heard of the face on Mars <laughs> that was spotted in Viking images. The original Viking view is in the lower right there. In later missions, this particular image is from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, we could see that the face, which many people like to uh, say is evidence of intelligent civilizations on ancient Mars, 
is actually just a hill with a trick of lighting. And if you look at it under different lighting uh, conditions, it doesn't look like a face at all. So we decided to start looking to follow the path of water to see if maybe that would tell us something about the search for life on Mars. And if you Google NASA finds water on Mars or NASA discovers water on Mars, you find half a million search results. We keep discovering water on Mars over and over again in a bunch of different ways. And this is really important because on Earth, anywhere we find water, we find life. So there's a ton of water on Mars in the present day, but also a lot more in the recent past, or geologically recent past. We found things like shallow ice that we found when we dug little trenches with the Phoenix Lander uh, back in 2007. We serendipitously found impact craters where we have images before and after, before there's no crater, after the crater has formed, and we can see this ice that these craters have excavated onto the subsurface and then deposited there for us to see. The polar caps are still sitting there on the surface today. The northern one in particular made up predominantly of water ice. And we have lots of channels carved all over the surface, and some channels that are possibly even still being carved on Mars today. And we finally found evidence of organic material with the Curiosity rover for the first time on Mars. But we still haven't found any evidence of life. We haven't found any evidence of ancient alien civilizations. But that's OK, because even though we know that we don't think from the data we have there's life on Mars today, and we're not sure if there was life on Mars in the past, either way, it's really important, because it gives us some context about humans in this, the Sorry, gives us context for humans in the solar system, the history of our civilization. If we look at the entire history of Earth in a diagram of a clock, this shows all of geologic history. The orange part on the right gives the whole time period from which we think Mars was wet, when it had flowing rivers and possibly oceans on its surface. And I'm not sure how well you can read the labels there, but basically Mars was completely dry by about 3.7 billion years ago. Any oceans or rivers at that point are completely gone. Anything between there and about three billion years ago are just little amounts of water seeping out here and there. But the point of this is that everything that ever happened on Mars that involved water and potentially life happened before eukaryotic life ever arose on Earth. So we're talking really early on in the solar system. So if there was life on Mars and it disappeared, it was probably there really early on and then died off pretty quickly long before life ever had a chance to evolve on Earth. If there's still life on Mars today, it has to be really different from anything that we know here to be able to survive in the really water-limited conditions and harsh uh, radiation environment that the planet has right now. So we know that Mars had water and the chemical, con chemical conditions for life to thrive in the past. But just because Mars was habitable doesn't mean it was ever inhabited. But even if there was never life on Mars, the fact that it could or couldn't have arisen is still important for us to understand life on Earth, because we really want to be able to answer that question. Are we alone in the universe? Are we even alone in our own solar system? So even if we still keep going back to Mars repeatedly, and we keep discovering water, but we keep not finding life, I want to argue that it's still really important that we explore Mars for what it is. Thanks.